I'm not gonna lie, I dreaded making this checklist for the longest time ever. But once I've done it, I think this is probably the best thing and the most useful thing ever and I want to share it with you. I delayed looking at any newborn baby related items for such a long time until I was halfway through my pregnancy. Not because I wasn't interested, I was really eager and really keen. But every time I started, I just didn't know where to start. There was too many things and the list kept going on and on and on and on and I was like, I'm not buying this many things. Definitely, it's not essential to buy so many for such a teeny weeny little baby. So I just kept putting it off for a very long time. Eventually, I just sat myself one day and I said, I need to do this. I have to start somewhere. I need to at least gain a little bit of knowledge, a bit of understanding about the kind of things that I need. So I sat down and made a list. I love checklists. What else is new? I sat and made my own checklist. I found a few online but it wasn't as practical or as useful for me because it doesn't really suit my personality. So following all of my researches that I've done, I made my own checklist to suit my personality, to suit my lifestyle and to, you know, kind of include the things that I thought would be necessary for me. I spoke about this in last week's video that I didn't want to make any baby registry list at all to give away to people, but I registered with a few other baby item related websites so that I could add some of the things to the shopping bag so I don't forget it. It's difficult to save so many links and it's difficult to keep track of everything that you're saving also, you know. There are so many different websites that you can buy things from and because we were in a pandemic and I am relying on websites and online purchases and everything, I just didn't want to copy so many links and increase the list and confuse things even more. So I registered with everything so that I can add it onto my basket and then do my own research and finalize it and kind of, you know, see what is useful and what isn't. As a result of that, I've made a checklist with so many different categories on it and let me share that with you. I am going to share my screen so you can have a look at it too while I am explaining that. Let me show you the categories first and foremost. I've made nine different categories. First is the travel, second is for sleep, third is changing, bathing, feeding and soothing, security and healthcare, clothing and materials, play and nursery. You decide what is essential for you and what is optional. Hey guys, this is Chimay from the future. I'm currently sitting and editing this video that you're watching at the moment and I thought I need to jump on and give you a little bit more context if you like, a little bit more clarity. This video was filmed back in November of 2020. I was around about 20 weeks pregnant I think. I was somewhere you know in the second trimester at that time when I did all of my research and did this excel spreadsheet and everything. And now at the time of editing it and by the time you watch it, I've already ordered most of the things from my list and I've changed my mind a little bit and a few things have changed a little bit here and there so I just wanted to explain. Um, first of all, I am a first time mother. Everything that I have in my list is from the research that I have done and from the things that I have heard from people. So it is extremely important that you do your own research. Um, point number two is the budget. I am really, really big on budget. We cannot pretend that budget is not a problem, or finance is not an issue at all. Whether it's an issue or not, it's not something that we can avoid. It's extremely important to know how much you have or how much you need to save to spend. That's why I'm really big on budget and I've not put the price on any of these things because um, the price has changed a lot back from November till now. I made my list back in November but I didn't want to buy anything so early. I just wanted to pace everything out and buy it in batches which is what I'm doing at the moment. And some of it have dropped and some of it have increased now because at the time when I was looking at it in November was around about... Um, you know, the Cyber Monday and the, the Black Friday sales and around about that time. It helps you to plan and be prepared with your finances and you know how much exactly you need to save as well. Uh, that was the thing. And the next thing is some of the items that I have in my list, I have changed my mind on it. Uh, white warmer was an essential for me in November, but now in March while I'm doing this, it's significantly warmer where I live and it's so much more brighter and sunnier at the moment. So I've decided that it isn't something that I need at the moment. So I'm gonna go with the flow and use only the water wipes and the wet wipes and not buy the wipe warmer for the time being. If it is really, really bad, 
um, then I will buy a white warmer, especially maybe when it's you know closer to winter this year, I will get one if I really need it at that point. But other than that, we've regulated uh, the heating in our house and it is generally warm all the time. And it is warm outside as well, so that's not a problem at all. And with the bin, um, I had the Tommy Tippy bin, but I wasn't really happy about it because of the filters that you need to buy, because of the amount of plastic you need to use and the height and you know, just the entire thing in general. So I had the Tommy Tippy twist and click bin and I also bought the Ubi bin. The Ubi bin is far more expensive than a Tommy Tippy. However, in the long run, it works out so much more cheaper. Um, this again, I did my research. I mean, some people think it's not necessary for a bin at all, but for me, it's extremely necessary. So I've decided on one of it against the other. So there are a few things, bits and pieces here and there that I've changed my mind from my list and my categories, but the categories have remained the same. That's not changed at all. It's just one or two items and that's how you can play around with it and that's how it's going to help you. The category is still the same but maybe some of the items can be different. Uh, it could be more expensive item that you're looking for or a cheaper item which leads me on to the next thing. None of my items or nothing in my list or my plan is to buy anything secondhand. I am not good with thrifting and because of the situation that we are in at the moment with the pandemic and the lockdown and everything Buying or looking for things secondhand is not practical at all. I really wanted to get some books and toys. Um, you know, I wanted to try and thrift it initially long back, okay, but that's not practical at all anymore now. So I'm not keen on it. I mean, if it's something that you want to do, you're good at, you need to do it, then by all means go ahead. There is no shame in buying anything secondhand. There is no shame in taking hand-me-downs. All of my own clothes when I was younger, I gave it to my cousins. All of my clothes, all of my things, I always gave it down to my cousins or some of my younger friends and people I know in church or just people I know basically, not necessarily the charity shops, but even anyone I know because all of my things are in very good condition. If you've got family or friends who are able to hand you down things, then by all means go ahead and take it. It's so much more safer to take it from family and friends rather than to, you know, buy it from a stranger and risking restrictions and laws and everything and going out and buying things. So that's something that you need to consider. For me, I want um, prime delivery. I want everything to be delivered to me as soon as I order it. So I, I've been doing all of my shopping online because I have no choice. We're all in the thick of lockdown at the moment and the lockdown restrictions are only easing after the baby is born and I need to buy things before the baby comes. So that's all I wanted to explain. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. If you, um, if you think I've missed anything out, let me know. Give me a shout. I will still have time to get it if you think it's absolutely necessary. So let's go on to the first category. The first one is travel. I've got one column with pictures. This column is not compulsory, but because I've seen so many different pictures and so many different options, I want to put the picture in so I remember exactly which one is it that I want to buy. Second category is the brand and you know the term used for that specific item. Third is the location as to where I'm going to buy it from, whichever category, um, as in whichever website or whichever shop it may be. And the quantity, obviously how many of it you need. The price at the time of looking at it, you can input that. If you are following a strict budget, then I would highly recommend you to put a price in here. I've also totaled it up to give me a column to show me the total for each category. And you can also add a formula to show the total over here for you. So you know how much each category is and you know how much money you need for each and every one. The checklist as well, let's say for example, if I've already bought this, I'm going to put a done in here and then maybe even color it off to show that that is now done so you don't get confused. All right, I'm gonna undo that and let me talk you through the list. So the first and uh, most essential one is the travel. This is a travel bundle system that I saw on um, Mamas and Papas. I spoke about this in last week's video and I'll link that for you. So you can have a look at it. You can go and check all of your reviews and everything if you wanted to. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about the reviews for um, Okaro. However, I must admit all of these videos are from mamas and papas or their sponsors. It's still not biased though. This is the entire set that I'm buying. It is the travel set with a push chair, the carry cord and the car seat along with a footmuff. I think that's what it's called. And it's got the ISO fixing, the adapter, 
the coffee holder and also a diaper changer a diaper bag the next one is a mirror this is essential for you to have um, while you have the baby in the car seat you also need a rain cover um, this one comes with the rain cover for the push chair and for the carry cord, but not for the car seat so I've added one and I'm gonna buy these from Amazon and this one is a carrier it's not part of the bundle however it is useful when you're traveling so I've included that under travel itself you would need this if you didn't want to use your pram for every purpose and this is important to get a suitable brand a suitable size maybe even um, and something which is really really safe that is extremely important with the baby carrier i was told that this is the award-winning one and the most recommended one as well the next category is for sleep for the first six months at least your baby needs to be next to you and not in a separate nursery so you need a bedside crib there are quite a lot of different options i looked at a few different options and i settled for this okay and this is the one that i'm buying it's from mamas and papas as well you need several extra fitted sheets for a newborn baby for sure this is an obvious reason i don't even need to explain and you need a waterproof mattress protector for uh, the bedside crib this is a moses basket but it has a rocking stand that you can also um, lock it so that it doesn't rock all the time when you have the baby in the living room or even in the dining room when you are away in the kitchen doing something else and you want your baby somewhere near you that you can see then it's best to have a moses basket you could either use a carry cart from your travel bundle set itself or you can get a separate moses basket if you've got several different floors in your house then you would want to have a baby sleeping area in each floor it is not practical for you to carry your moses basket up and down the stairs all the time it's also not practical for you to move your snooze spot all the time once you have it clipped to your bed um, it's always recommended that you have it clipped to your bed and you don't actually move it all the time so I went for this one it wasn't very expensive I think it was less than 50 pounds if I'm not mistaken it looked really really nice it kind of has a protector so it protects the sunlight away from the baby's face itself and it just looks good you know for aesthetic purposes and for pictures and everything I had two options for this either from online for baby or Amazon and depending on whichever I had it in stock I was going to buy from either or and I just kept that there the next one is a baby comforter this is NHS approved and in fact it is NHS recommended I saw someone talk about this on Instagram before you're meant to keep this so that it carries the mother's scent and then when you train your baby to nap during the day you don't want to be carrying the baby all the time you can of course carry your baby as and when needed you need to be wise and make that decision but it's not recommended to have the baby on you all the time the mother is meant to you know keep it on her for a day or so for 24 hours so that it picks up mommy's scent and then you put it by the baby's side when he or she is sleeping so they are comforted they have that similar scent and they know that their mother is around and they're able to nap on their own um, i think it is recommended to help babies nap on their own and even nap better there is quite a lot of research about this you can go and do your own reading this baby lounger is somewhat a dupe for the docker tot docker tot is like ridiculously expensive and I wasn't going to spend that much money at all. Amazon had one for about 20 something pounds. This is on the occasions where I want to have the baby on the sofa or um, on my bed with me while the baby is napping during the day. I am terrified of keeping the baby next to me at night while I'm sleeping. I don't want to do that at all. But I want an option in case if I wanted to have the baby next to me in the bed, then I could use a baby lounger. And portable white noise. I've heard that babies need white noise to sleep it helps them sleep so much more better apparently so i've done my research about it and this is the one that i'm choosing because it's portable it's easy for you to move about while you're traveling outside or even anywhere at home you know even if your baby is not sleeping in a dark room not sleeping in a regular place if you have your baby in the living room with you the next category is for changing this is um, very obvious you definitely need a few things to help you with changing the baby with newborns 
you have to change the baby multiple times a day sometimes within a couple of minutes so you need to have a comfortable place um, there is nothing wrong in not having a changing table or not having a set station if you're comfortable but with that then by all means you can go ahead and do that but I know my personality I like to have a specific location for everything so I want to have a changing station um, specified just for this of course I will have like a changing caddy where I have all of those things that I need which I'm able to move from room to room but I want to have a location where I can take the baby to during the day to change and dress up and all of those stuff so first and foremost is a changing mat there's so many different options for this really cheap ones really expensive ones I want to tell you um, a funny story a true story about this one okay the first time I was looking for a changing mat I saw the hatch baby changing mat that one was like a ridiculous 250 pounds or something but yeah, it was connected to an app on your phone and I wanted it because you can weigh the baby easily and it's wipeable. It's got a lot of other options that it adds on to that app and you can track your baby's feeding and sleeping time on that app also if I'm not mistaken. It just had a lot of this hi-fi thing in it and I wanted that. I added that to my basket and then I was doing my research and everything and then I did my budget and I thought this is not feasible it's not essential it doesn't have to be this expensive at all so obviously I scraped that and I looked for something else I'm gonna get two of these changing mats so that I have one in the station and one in my bedroom so at night I don't have to get up and go to a different station to change the baby and you know I can just do it in the bedroom or maybe keep one in the living room wherever necessary I'm just gonna put in two different places and then the caddy is obviously for moving about in the house you know if you're not at the changing station you're in the living room or you're downstairs or somewhere where your changing station isn't available then you would want to have your caddy where you, you can put a lot of different things in it I've put two in here but it really depends on whether I need two or just one I haven't really finalized that yet changing table obviously this one is from IKEA I picked one of those smaller ones and slightly cheaper ones because I haven't got a nursery um, for the time being I need to fit one in a very small location so I've looked for a smaller table for the time being so that I can you know lay the baby down on on that changing table and keep that as my changing station you need a nappy rash cream for sure I haven't found a suitable one as yet I wouldn't know which is suitable I'm a first-time mother I should have probably you know given you that disclaimer at the beginning I'm a first-time mother but I'm a very practical person and I'm a thinker so I think about all sorts of possible options before I choose one um, and that's how I have been doing all of my research and I've obviously done a lot of reading and everything so you need several nappy rash cream but the first ones you buy you need to buy probably one or two or you know a tester pack a small one just to test and see if it's suitable for your baby or not this is a Tommy Tippy nappy bin I've read a lot about um, a diaper genie a lot of people have said it's not essential a lot of people swear by it I know what kind of a person I am. I'm not going to walk to the bin outside to throw each and every nappy. So I definitely want a nappy bin and I've got two of those. Amazon had the best deal with this. There is another one called Angel Bin, I think if I'm not mistaken. Online for Baby had that. It's far, far cheaper. However, the refill that you get with it is very expensive. So it's not feasible in the long run. You pay only six or seven pounds for the bin, but you pay 20, 30 pounds for the refill for it. And that's just not practical, is it? That's why I chose a Tommy Tippy. The bin is about 20 something pounds odd. And the refill is slightly cheaper than that because you get like in a dozen or half dozens. You need nappies. This again, do your research, find whatever is suitable for you. You don't know the baby size as yet so first and foremost get one pack first for your baby babies grow really really quickly from newborn to you know bigger sizes really quickly and you don't even know uh, what hits you so get one size first see if that is suitable and then get different ones you need to go by trial and error with the nappy water wipes is my choice of wipes for sure it's always best to use non-fragrance and it's always best to use one for sensitive skin because you don't know how your baby's skin is going to be whether your baby is going to be allergic to anything or not so you just have to be very very careful with all of those things this wipes warmer was a bit of a um, controversy some people said they didn't want it at all they didn't like it some people said it didn't matter it kind of dried down um, all of their water wipes and everything but if you get a very good water wipe 
and you put it in your white warmer, it's not going to dry it out completely. Um, just imagine, you have a baby born probably in autumn or summer. My baby is going to be born in spring, so that's not too bad. But yet, your baby is so warm and bundled up in your womb for nine months and then all of a sudden, the minute he or she comes out, it's really cold outside, you know. Even if it is spring or summer, it's really cold. For the first couple of weeks, you still need like long sleeve bodysuits and onesies and all of those things. You can't just have sleeveless vest or short sleeves. That's why I wanted a wipes warmer. I am a very cold person. I'm always cold regardless of how many layers I have my feet and my hands and everything gets really really cold easily. If the baby is anything like me, he's going to hate having wet wipes on his skin when he is already cold, when he doesn't have his clothes on and I'm trying to change him and everything. So yep, wipes for my it is and that's going to be my essential. I mean, if the baby doesn't like it then I'll stop using it, otherwise I want to have it ready. Um, and the next one is a touch night light. This is very important because in the middle of the night, you wouldn't want to switch on daylight or you wouldn't want to switch on your entire bedroom light because you wake yourself up, you wake your partner up and you wake your baby up fully as well. So it's best to have a night light where you can have bright enough light to see what you're doing while you're changing your baby or while you're feeding your baby but not bright enough to wake your baby up. Moving on to the next category is a bath category. I really really liked this. This description on this one was so good. It can transition very easily from newborn up to a couple of months old, up to even two years old if I'm not mistaken but by two years old you want a bigger tub for sure. So I've selected this. I haven't decided on toiletries as yet because when you have a newborn, for the first couple of weeks, you don't need to use any toiletries or any chemicals and bath washes and everything. You just need to wipe your baby down with water and a cloth. That's it. You don't need anything else at all for the beginning. So I don't want to rush and buy anything as yet. I heard that this skin smoother brush is very good because with baby skin, they are really sensitive and they always have um, different kind of skin and you never know if they have this rashes sort of a thing um, apparently the skin smoother is really good to use while you're showering your baby this is essential for some people and probably not essential for, for the others but I think this is going to be useful because this is my first baby I'm a little bit skeptical worried and you know terrified on bathing the baby changing the baby whatever it may be I've never really handled a newborn baby on my own before you know I've not done any of these things myself so I'm terrified the purpose of this is so you pour water on the baby and it doesn't fall into his eyes and it makes it so much more easier it makes bath time so much more smoother so that the baby is not crying and cranky because he's got um, water or soap in his eyes and all that so I'm buying this for sure this was 20 pounds odd I think it's slightly expensive for a waterfall rinser however um, I've heard that it really really works so I'm using that bath thermometer it's self-explanatory you need to know that you have the right temperature for your baby rather than just guessing with your elbow at the back of your palm and all of those things just use a bath thermometer feeding and soothing this is going to be very personal to everyone i've got um the stormy tippy anti-colic sterilizer set for an essential newborn list because you just don't know what kind of baby you're going to get. You don't know how your baby is going to feed. You don't know how desperate you are going to be to try and feed the baby also. So you need a sterilizer for sure. I found a very good deal for the entire set. So I just bought this actually. I've added it onto my list and I've bought it. Even if you don't use it within the first three months, you will still eventually use it after a couple of months. So it's best to always buy it earlier. So you have it ready when you need it and you're not rushing to buy any random thing at the last minute. Classifiers is a must. This one had a lot of different descriptions on it. I don't remember what it is at the moment, but this was a very good one. If I can find it, I'll leave links for all of these things in the description box. You definitely need a drying tray for baby. You know, with baby's things, whether it's water bottles, milk bottles, sorry, or your pacifier or whatever it is that you use for your baby, when you wash it, you can't use a regular sponge that you use to wash your other dishes because of the texture, because of the 
you know spices and all of those things that is in there you can't mix that with your baby things at all and you can't put it on a regular dryer this specific drying tray is meant for baby's thing it doesn't touch the base of it where you have water collecting and where it can generate a lot of bacteria and all of those stuff it's got this spikes on it and you put all of your baby things on the spike so the water drips down i've got teethers and i've got the silicone fine brush now i've not seen many people speak about this at all but apparently when your baby is about one or two months old you need to use this to either brush the tongue or to brush the gums this helps for the teething process itself it kind of soothes their gums and it helps them with something i don't remember what it is but that's really really helpful and it was highly recommended by someone that i saw on instagram so i've added that this one comes with its own individual container so it's really clean and nice you could use this during bath time for your baby tommy tp perfect prep this is the one that prepares hot water for you it is at a perfect temperature when you need to make milk for the baby this is not going to be essential for you if you're going to exclusively breastfeed the baby for the first six months year year and a half however long you want to do it but I've already added this on now uh, because I just don't know what kind of baby it's going to be like, you know, whether I'm able to feed or not, whether I need to use formula or not and all of those things. I just want to be prepared. I know I want this for the future and if I see a good deal, I'm going to buy it now. We are moving on to the next one, security and healthcare. You've got a baby monitor, you have a nail file set. This one has a thermometer in it. It's got a few different things in it nose frida then you have the chico weighing scale and you have a baby dan guard now with the chico weighing scale because we're all in a pandemic midwives and nurses don't really do what they do all the time it's very difficult for them and they rely on you for a lot of things like even if i have my own midwife's appointment they don't really weigh me at all they expect me to weigh myself at home and when i go for my appointment they ask me what my weight is so they avoid doing as much as they can so that they don't have so much contact with you. I obviously wanted to track the baby's growth and development and everything. So I've added a wing scale here. Baby Dan Guard. This is a very different baby guard gate. This one doesn't have the metal bar that you have at the bottom. Um, you just have to lift it up and it doesn't take up so much space at all. And it folds in like a folding door. And it's so much more safer because it's not a trip hazard for you because it doesn't have that base in the bottom. It opens as if it's a clean door and then it shuts that way and it's not easy for children to open at all. Next category is clothes. I'm not going to talk in detail about this but I will include all of these things for you to see. You need zero to three month bodies or you know bodies and bottoms what is advisable for newborn is that you don't get individual t-shirts or you know dresses and that sort of stuff it's good to get a bodysuit where you can clip at the bottom because when you carry a baby the baby is so small and when you carry it you're lifting the t-shirt up as well so that exposes a baby's body to you know cold air and everything Body suits are always the best for the first couple of months at least until they can start crawling or walking until they're big enough to be able to you know wear bigger t-shirts and bigger clothes and stuff and then get the bodysuit and then get bottoms you need a couple of those and baby wonder suit is very helpful for night time it's really really good this wonder suit was highly recommended it's only available in John Lewis um, very rarely available on Amazon because it runs out of stock this is from Australia originally and it comes with zipper I think it comes with a two-way zipper if I'm not mistaken um, you need a few you know sleep suits and pajamas you need the muslin cloth you need swaddles these are the body suits that I was talking about the one that has the button at the bottom and then get a few trousers you also need some caps and mittens for sure these baby burps I thought was really really cute sometimes when you burp a baby after feeding them you know they tend to vomit it out or there's something extra whatever that comes out so the baby burps will come in really handy at that point rather than finding a whole big muslin cloth and all that you can just use this and put this in the wash sleeping bag like i mentioned you can get various different types i've just put two for now because you need to get it for the age for the specific age you can't just use zero to six months from newborn itself it's going to be super huge and the baby will be drowning uh, and swimming in there so get an appropriate size 
Um, I've also included some velvet hangers here. These ones comes with the year mark as well, as in the months, how old the sizes are and everything. I use velvet hangers myself and I find it really, really helpful and useful. It's far better than any regular hanger, so I'm not going to go back to any regular hanger and that's what I'm doing for my baby clothes also. The last essential for me for the time being will be the play. We think that newborn babies don't need any toys to play, but sensory toys, play mats, some of the books that you read to them, all of these things are extremely, extremely important. I would highly recommend you to do some reading and research on sensory toys for newborn babies. The kind of colors and the kind of things that they can see when they first grow up. And it's so important that you interact with your own baby rather than just playing something on TV or, you know, playing a music and let them entertain themselves because they're so small, you need to read to them. You need to spend time with them so that they can hear your voice, they understand who you are, they can communicate with you, it helps with their development. So I've included a baby gym, um, several different types of books and newborn toys and also a cot. Uh, or a pram mobile. And the absolute final category for me is the nursery checklist. This is not essential for the time being because I'm not going to get anything for now but if anything changes by the time the baby comes then I'll start looking at these things but you obviously need a cot if you have a nursery. This one specifically is the kind of cot that can extend with your toddler. You can use this up till the, your baby is five years old. You can extend it, remove the side frames and everything and then make it into a regular bed. Um, I wanted a nicer, bigger chest of drawers so you can put in all of your changing things and the baby's clothes and all that. You obviously need wardrobe for your kid. You also need a feeding chair. I mean, it depends. I've got a day bed for the time being, so I'm kind of considering between a day bed or a feeding chair, but you need something in your nursery if that's where you're going to go and feed your baby at night after you've transitioned them from your own room to their nursery room. I've included these ledgers for bookshelves because I want to put all of the baby books and everything on here. It looks more presentable, it looks more colorful and cheerful in a baby nursery when you have all the books laid out in front rather than looking at the spine of it itself. This is highly recommended by a lot of people, very cheap, I think it's about five pounds or even lesser than that for each ledge and you can buy a few and then stack it up like a bookshelf and it works out far cheaper than buying a baby bookshelf itself. Finally, a toy cabinet. When you have a lot of toys, you want to have place to gather everything together rather than all of it thrown over all over the place. So you can try different types of baby um, toy organizers and everything. So this is my newborn essential list. Um, it is essential for zero to three months. Most of the clothes and everything that I have is only up till three months and most of the things that I have planned is only up till three months because you need to see how your baby is growing, your baby's development and the size and feeding habits and everything. You learn everything along with the baby. So there's really no point buying so many different things ahead of time unless it's very good sales, very good discount or it looks super cute and it's one of a kind, you don't want to miss it, then that's fine. But it's not really worth buying an entire wardrobe for a newborn baby before you know how big your baby is going to be or how small your baby is going to be. As mentioned, I'll try and include the links to a lot of the things that I have here. If you wanted to check it out yourself, you can go ahead and do that. Alternatively, I will have the list available on my website so you can go and download it if you wanted to. You could make a copy. This list is very, very adaptable. Like I mentioned, these brands are the ones that I have done my research on. It's according to my preference, according to my budget, and according to you know my lifestyle and my suitability and all of those things. You can change it however you want to. You can make it suitable for your own budget. You can make it suitable according to your preferences and everything, but it gives you a general idea of what are the things that you need for a newborn baby for zero to three months essentially before your baby is born so that you know you're not um, you know, very confused about last minute things and all that. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you thought about this list and also let me know if I've missed something in my own checklist so I will still have time to add something onto it. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!